Hey, this is Simeon from uh, Monument City, fan of Everton. Welcome to the DU Football Show, and uh, Graham's going to have no kind of college fun left after this. Man speaks the truth, I tell you, man. He speaks the truth. Yeah, scathing words from such a nice guy, you know? Well, you know, you walk into his bar and you insult his soccer team and you expect him to be nice <laughs> in return. So I'm I with. D- the g- I did do that. So, so Sammy, I'm with the game today. Are you with the game? Oh, I'm with the game. We're with the game. We're both with the game, right? We're ready right. to do this. You're a team player. I'm a team player. Team player. How about you, producer Mel? Are you in the game? Are you ready to do this? Oh, am I allowed to unmute? Uh, Ooh. Clearly she's not. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Drunkard United Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way is the destitute, almost broke Samuel Graham. Sammy, how we doing over there? Even Simeon called you out for that shit. I'm doing okay. <laughs> took took an extra bet and lost on that one, too. It's all right. I got a nest egg, man. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. You're going to lose that nest egg soon enough, too. <laughs> We are recording at Studio H just outside our nation's capital. You can check us out on all podcast platforms. Be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and most importantly, keep sharing with your friends. We really do appreciate when you do that. Now, should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Sammy, why don't you tell the good people how they can get in touch? Uh, As long as you have nice things to say, you can uh, get in touch on our DMs at at Show. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then DUFootballShow at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to talk shit, just make sure it's about Big Sam because I've been put through the ringer these last couple days. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys! Had a whole support like system there with you on Sunday. Talk, not really. No, talk, not really. Not really at all. Talk all the shit you want to about <laughs> Graham uh, through uh, Twitter because I'm the one that handles Twitter, and he still sees it, so it will hurt him. And I'll encourage you. Um, and I'll just jump on it like I usually do. <laughs> Oh, Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirits industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirit. So as the red-blooded Americans we are, we vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Sammy, what are we drinking tonight? So we've got a bourbon whiskey uh, called Kentucky Vintage. Uh, It comes in at 90 proof, um, made using the sour mash technique. Uh, It's going to come in at $45.99 to $49.99 on the shelf. And uh, for me, it is just plain Damn good old school bourbon whiskey. Yep. Sometimes we kind of forget what just a good classic bourbon tastes like. Um, you know, some people may want to uh, scoff at something like Wild Turkey or Old Granddad, but you know what? It's just good old fashioned bourbon. It just, it's got a great taste to it. It's got a little bit of heat. It's not overly sweet. A lot of uh, newer bourbons can tend to be a, a little too, touch too sweet at times, and it's just great. Um, sour Mash is. Basically, if you're wondering what it is, it's it's basically taking like from the mother of the yeast, right? So you always use a little bit of the last yeast strain into your next uh, fermentation tank so that the very first strand that was ever used is being used even in its newest time. So, but damn good bourbon, man. Yeah, very good bourbon. Very, very good bourbon. <laughs> And what else should we remember to do, Sam? Uh, drink responsibly, guys. Yeah. Holy shit, how about that? Because he was definitely, he, he had that distant stare like, okay, well, I'm ready to talk about something like else. I was supposed to do something. Right. Let's talk about something else. Hold on. This is going way too quickly. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> well, let's get into Are it, kids. To, like, yeah, that whole, hey. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Very good. There we go, kids. Let's go ahead and get into the action. Now, um... This is slightly uh, abbreviated version of the uh, of the weekend because we discussed all three of Sunday's games at the live show, and for everybody, the live show will be up on Thursday, so you'll get uh, two shows from us this week. Yeah, we kind of glossed over Spurs Wolves, though. I think we might do a. a I went. I went back. On that. I went back and listened to it. We we did a we did a good amount. We, we right. really did. I I thought we really didn't talk much about it, but you have to remember, Sam, we drank a lot of beer. That's true. I mean, a lot of beer. Do you want a cool fact? Sure. Cool fact. 16% of the Maryland Wolves fans were at your live show. That's true. That's right. They literally have half of dozens of fans (laughs) of the club. Half of a dozen. Yeah, in, (laughs) in the uh, Baltimore area. And we met one of the six. It was very nice. That was lovely. Uh, Danny, right? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Very cool. Yeah, we had a lot of cool people show up. That was a lot of fun yesterday. And real quick, um, shout out to Simeon, uh, despite his his terrible introduction today. Uh, Shout out to Simeon and Monument City Brewing. (laughs) 
Uh, shout out to Simeon and to uh, Monument City Brewing Company for hosting us. Uh, it was a lovely time. Um, great space. Uh, worked well putting the TVs, you know, with the configuration we had yep. everything else. We had both games on, one with sound. Um, their speakers were brilliant, mm-hmm. uh, matched up well with all of our equipment, just the Audio whole sounds, nine. Audio sounds good. It's not going to sound like an echoey live show when you guys get to it. It sounds really tight. Yeah, it, it was the, the whole experience was wonderful. And then, of course, uh, Monument City's beers are fantastic. So, um, you know, things go a lot smoother when you got the right lube. You know what I mean? Exactly. God, I, drank, <laughs> I think I took about a dozen. I was just going. I was going. It was just throwing them back. I was yeah. a happy boy. Yeah, got a little good. loose there by the end. You can definitely <laughs> tell. You're like, ah, oh, Houston's definitely drunk. It was yeah. uh, about <laughs> noon when he goes, woman, you're definitely driving home. To which I went, <laughs> duh. <laughs> Da, yeah. da, da, da. So, but yeah, just thanks again, guys. It was a lot of fun. Hope we can do it again in the future. Um, and maybe we see something for the spring, maybe. So, uh, yeah, definitely. So, talking about the rest of the uh, games of the weekend uh, that all happened on Saturday, and of course, this uh, Monday's uh, Monday afternoon game. Apparently, Sam, um, all the teams in the Prem have decided to go along with the Premier League and NBC Sports conspiracy to create VAR to make sure Liverpool won the league by making sure that they all dropped points this weekend, too. Bournemouth won, Chelsea nil, Leicester won, Norwich won. Um, Chelsea have now lost four of five, Sammy. Yeah. Um, it's just part of having a young side, I think, uh, honestly. they um, We knew they were going to be up and down uh they kind of surprised us with how long they were up for. Yeah, they get. They, um, you, you started to go, okay, this team's going to be maybe perfectly yeah, fine. Maybe they figured and, it out. Eh, yeah, they're still young, and now they get their wobble. Um, they did look a, a bit more solid at the back uh, with Rudiger coming back into the fold. Yeah, um, Zuma looked much more assured, um, and some very decisive tackles put in uh, by by um, by Rudiger. Yeah, so I think they will be fine. There's no question they'll finish in the European places in my eyes. Um, yeah, fourth or fifth is definitely yeah. theirs, I think. I just think they need to, you know, steady the ship a little bit, play some, go back to basics a little bit, just play some regular football and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cherries, I mean, surprising win on the road. They don't win ever on the road, it seems. And uh, yeah. a bit of fortune in the goal. I mean, it was a, it was a great ball by Gosling. I think, but- well, I think VAR confirmed that it was onside. I mean, I, this one is one of the ones I wouldn't put on the assistant referee. That transition is Chelsea's running out while he's kind of where he was. That's always hard to see. And another player from an offside's position is running back is in. There, so yeah. it's very easy to, as they cross, to lose exactly. who, who's the onside, offside player. But I think that VAR confirmed this, and, and really from Dan Gosling, was a, a fantastically composed and inventive finish. Yeah. Um, the way he took the ball, it was a, a great touch, to be honest, it set it up, and the awareness to know where Kepa was and just flip it over the top of him. Um, Aspilicueta worked his socks off to get back, uh, tried to clear the ball off the line, but was already in the goal. He actually made it to the ball. <laughs> And got the ball out of the goal, but it was already. But it was goal. already over. It was already over the line. So, um, but busting a hump to get back and a very acrobatic clearance uh, that, unfortunately for Chelsea, you know, wasn't yeah. a clearance. Odd, odd clean sheet for the cherries. Yeah, very odd clean sheet for the cherries. But um, uh, what's the goalkeeper's <laughs> name for Christ's sake? I have it written down. Ramsdale. Yeah, Ramsdale. Yeah, had himself a match. Yeah, uh, I think Emerson's header. Um. There, uh, towards the end of the game, I would say Absolutely. middle of the second half was fantastic. That yeah. save, uh, now Emerson, I think, should have done better, but he got some pace behind the ball, got some power behind the ball. Uh, but Ramsdale was quick to it and then gathered himself to flip the ball away, yeah, uh, kind of claw it away. Uh, and it was put behind for a corner, um, by uh, by one of his defenders. Uh, but he had a few just absolutely brilliant saves. For, for for somebody that's been beaten so many times this season, he really stood on his head yesterday. Yeah, I I mean, he's been beaten a bunch, but he's also, I mean, you don't necessarily put it on him as a keeper because he's even starting to receive consideration as being a uh, as being an England well, player. Well, Bournemouth yeah. was chanting, uh, England's number one, England's number one. Yeah, of course Yeah, all were. their fans were, uh, were yelling at during the game. <laughs> yeah, well... Our boy on uh, Sunday got the got the rave on, so he made a couple of gr- brilliant shot <laughs> shot stops as well. I, yeah, I, I think the more surprising point was they got the shutout without Aki because Nathan Aki has been so yeah. terribly important to that defense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I wonder. I wonder with Chelsea, 
um, with just having the young side. And I know a few of their players played in the championship last season, which obviously the fixtures come thick and fast. In. Right. But I wonder if – because there's, there hasn't been a ton of squad rotation, really, um, no, from not Frank really. Lampard. Normally uh, the old guys are the only ones. Like, Willian and Pedro are getting rotated out. And right. As but Mal, uh, Kovacic. And uh, one of the uh, – there's a young back. I'm forgetting his name. Um but I don't know. yeah, and uh, and then of course uh, Emerson on the other side, and there's another back that are kind of getting. There's a few backs that are getting changed, but like that Mount, that was more out of just not playing very well. Mount a- Abraham and uh, Pulisic are playing every game, every game. all the time. Kovacic, Jorginho, every and Golo Conte yeah. since he's uh, yeah. come back full fully fit. Yeah, as long as he's healthy, he's playing. There's every which rightly so he should. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is I wonder if this recent congested fixture list is starting to take its toll. Uh, on players that may or may not be used to it. Well, it doesn't remember Angolo Conte only came back about four or five games ago from injury, maybe six games ago from injury. Yeah. So is he back up to full fitness for real? Yeah. Um, Jorginho, I mean, he only runs at a snail's pace anyway. Um, but Pulisic never played in England before. They actually, I think in Germany, be close to going on their winter break by now. Right. So he might be starting to get burned out. Um, Hudson Adoy just recently back from a long term injury. Tammy Abraham. Now, yes, he played in the championship. He should be fairly used to this. Mason right. Mount, same thing. Um, but then you've got uh, Mateo Kovacic. You've got uh, who I think came in last January or, or, or uh, something like that. I think Frank. Frank. Um, Frank is starting to show what he did. Uh, did he came in last summer. Frank's starting to show summer. what he did at uh, Derby County as well, which is really lean on a on a certain lineup, yeah, which probably isn't the smartest thing for him to do with a young squad in the Prem. He's going to need to start finagling that lineup a little bit and get those guys some rest, especially because they advance to the Champions League as well. Yeah, for sure, 100%. So moving on to um, Leicester and uh, Norwich. Pukki back on the score sheet again, now to nine goals for the season. They fluffed a few chances before he took that one, but... uh. It was really just a. It was very odd because Leicester hasn't been giving up many goals. I think they have. They have one of the best three defenses in Europe's top five yeah. league. Schmeichel wasn't expecting that one because you saw him kind of get tree trunked and then just fall back, you know, lifelessly as the ball went by. Oh yeah, him. well, he, so I don't think he was ready for it. No, so Yunchu, uh, and this w- seemed to be a theme throughout the match. It was a basic <laughs> run from Timu Puki that he that he made and got on the end of. Yeah, that happened hard. at least four more times. Yeah, where it was just a basic run and a kind of a long ball over the top. Um, this one happened to be a through ball on the ground. He took it away from Su Yun Chu, uh, and then right as Schmeichel plants his feet, just kind of darted it to the back post. Yeah, and Schmeichel again, as you say, rooted to the spot, couldn't couldn't shift his body weight, couldn't get back across to get to it. Apparently, uh, producer Mel really likes the word Schmeichel. It just sounds like you're making up a name. It doesn't sound like that's somebody's real name. It's the, well, it's, is it funnier that his first name's Casper? Yeah. I Casper mean, it, Schmeichel? It definitely is a made-up name. That guy's in some sort of program hiding his true identity. It's like, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Yeah, that's just not a real thing. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. Hashtag fake news. Okay, Mel will remember him now when I say the following. It's the Danish Viking god uh, goalkeeper that you saw in the oh, World Cup. Yeah, he's Thor. And just pick uh, a so really bad name. Oh yeah, real? oh yeah, he's Thor. But okay. he just picked a really bad name, like to to walk around under. Well, his I mean, Schmeichel's probably a family name. Yeah, I, As his dad's name was Petter Schmeichel. Uh, yeah. Foxes looked right past yeah. Norwich in this one, don't you think? He's just going right just past. Completely this. fucked it off. Yeah. I'm fucking. I'm keeping <laughs> the bus going. I drive the bus. You're um, drunk Uber passengers. <laughs> yeah, they they. Lester did create some chances. Yeah. Uh, oh, they did. Few. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, and in, they're in the, normally second half, the second half, when they're at a 1 1 tie and realize they got to get a win, they pushed a little harder. This is exactly what the Everton game was, except for they didn't get the three points. They only got the one. Um, right. They had chances. They just, it just seemed like they didn't push the needle. They just, you know, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, disappointing. They, ne- it's they, never, very got, disappointing they never got out of third gear. Yeah. Um, and normally, Leicester are a bit more clinical than that. Um, yeah. It just it wasn't their day, really, to be honest with you. Uh, although, they did get a little lucky. Jamie Vardy um, flicking on a header from a corner. Um, and it kind of... Tim Krul was playing him not getting to it. Yeah. <laughs> and the way it flicked off his head, and they were very close together, he ended up kind of just slapping it into his own Oh, head, yeah. Oh, he definitely just pretty full blown funny. punched it right into his yeah, own goal. it was very funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, it ruined. Well, I mean, lots of other things ruined your bet as well. But uh, you know, that definitely ruined your bet. Yeah. Because at that time when that happened, you were like, okay. Well, NBC now Sports. Now I just need. Now I just need <laughs> Chelsea and uh, and Leicester to win. 
Oh wait. So I was watching a game. I was watching whatever game they had on NBC, um, uh, NBCSN at the time, and I was just refreshing my Premier League app, and at first, it showed that Vardy had scored, and I was like, "Yes, fucking a right, we're in. Come on." And then I text you about it. Yep. And I get. I don't know. Were you watching it? Is that? I I had been bouncing around. Okay, so you found out that it had been given as a cruel own goal yeah. before I did. Yep. So then you took it upon yourself to crush my hopes and dreams. Well, I mean, let's face it. I live to crush your hopes and <laughs> dreams. It makes me happy inside. Um, is the lead too big? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 tending to think so as well. I think I think this is uh, now Liverpool's to completely fuck up. Which fortunately. Fortunately, they are prone to do. We know they're capable of. Now, the other thing I wanted to say real quick: Did you uh, see what happened with Kalechi Iniacho? Um, Kalechi Iniacho. Yeah, the the uh, so apparently foul in front of the box where everybody got around. Apparently, him. the ball was played out intentionally. <laughs> the ball was thrown into him, and instead of playing it back to the goalkeeper, he started to play, and so he's about twenty five yards out. He starts running towards the goal. And um, I can't remember which defender it was, uh, but just cleaned him out. <laughs> yep. Uh, as he ran across the box, and all eleven, including Tim Krul, oh, were surrounded around surrounded him while him, he was yelling on the at ground. him, screaming at him. Yeah. And Todd Cantwell ended up getting a yellow card for what looked like grabbing his jersey while he was laying on the ground. Somebody I, uh, else I heard on a um, on one of the talk sports shows uh, said that he grabbed his throat. Uh, I didn't see it. that. He grabbed the jersey. I didn't that's see all. that from the replay. Yeah, exactly. I thought he just grabbed the shirt, but yeah, it was ugly scenes for a second there. I mean, uh, don't don't fucking do that shit. There's well, there's certain gentlemen's laws to the game, and you fucking you, oh yeah. you, you know. And if you don't, did did you notice there weren't a lot of Leicester players there helping him out? Uh, but there was one. Yeah. Oh, Jamie fucking well, Vardy. Because <laughs> Jamie fucking Vardy likes a scrap. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not pretty, but it counts as three points all the same. Liverpool two in a very blustery, windy Anfield. Watford nil. This is one of the ugliest games I've ever seen in my life. It was not a pretty game. It was terrible. Uh, Mo Salah provided two moments of brilliance. Uh, both goals fantastically tucked oh away. Oh my god! With, both goals were br- brilliant with his goals. weaker foot as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ben Foster was immense in this game, though. Liverpool did have a few chances. Oh, yeah, of course. And Ben Foster made some very, very good saves. Um, But Virgil almost gave the game away before Salah sealed it. Um, And (laughs) just because I like the funnier side of shit. Right. Uh, Watford, um, two players. I think it was uh, Ismael Saar and um, Decore uh, whiffed with essentially the two best chances of the game. Decore whiffed twice <laughs> and then proceeded to probably have the worst game I've ever seen Decore have. <laughs> and he's he's a hell of a player. He's one of those oh, kind yeah. of guys you expect to see advance to uh to quote a bigger club soon enough. I mean, oh yeah, I could see him at a, I could see him at an Everton. I could yeah. see him at a you know somewhere. S- Silva wanted him for a while when Silva was still there. They yeah. were really pushing to get him, <laughs> which frankly we could use right now because we have no defensive those midfielders. Whiffs were pitiful. Yeah. Um, All of them. Yeah, that that first that first uh, Sala goal. You as a defender, that's got to be the most demoralizing. When you go, okay, fuck you, take it with your weak foot. Yep, <laughs> and absolutely. They, and they and you let you give them the room because the defender gave him a little room. Well, he had to. He, he was just, right. He was right around the edge of the box. And, and, and then, Mo Salah has been accused of diving. Yep. You upper know, uh, accused. I'm t- well, he's been accused <laughs> he of diving. Dives constantly. But, uh, all right, he dove a, glasses. He, he dove a few times in that game. He has been accused of diving a lot. So you, as a defender, back off. Yeah, so you don't want to don't get involved in that, right? And you don't want. And then what does he do? Weaker foot puts it in the upper nineties, inside like, of the post. Yeah, I mean, you as a defender, you just turn and look at that and go, "Fuck me." Well, you know, fuck what are you spo- right? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? He's so left footed, and then yeah. comes back onto his right, and then again later on, a deflected shot came through. Salah just happened to be standing on the line and took it first time inside of his right boot, behind his left leg, facing away from goal. And nutmegs the defender on the line. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just just like what are you supposed to do? <clears throat> this is this is again how you win the league. You win these games. You you win ugly. You get three points when you fucking need it. And Liverpool is doing it in spades right now. They're they're figuring out a way to get W's every single week, even when it's not pretty. Now it's 
like it's got to be, you know, for a Liverpool fan, I'm sure they don't fucking care. They don't care one bit how they're winning as long as they're winning. For for the outsider looking in on it, you have to wonder, like, there's been something about, like, the past few times when United won it, the past few times when Chelsea won it, the past few times when City won it. They just worked oh, the yeah. weaker, like, worked the weaker sides. And while right now it doesn't matter, Liverpool has like a three, four game spurt where they lose a couple and tie a couple. Suddenly that winning ugly matters. Matters big time. Matters a Absolutely. lot. And, and considering that, that, that the week prior, they really pulled off a couple of big wins, you know, embarrassing Everton and getting their manager ultimately fired and then turning around and winning the next game that weekend against the Cherries, 3 nothing in convincing fashion. You would have just thought, because it wasn't like they played with a B squad in this match against no, Watford. not at all. Like you would have thought they would have just gone and put the boots to him despite how well Ben Foster plays. You expect that. Well, ben Foster makes a bunch of great saves and still loses games for nothing. Well, the other thing we said about, like, for instance, your, you know, quote-unquote new manager bump with Big Dunk. Yeah. And just the energy and inspiration that that has. There was a debate started again about who the hardest manager in the Premier League is because old Nigel Pearson got appointed Watford manager in the last yeah. week. And he's, you know, not a scaredy cat. He's not one to back down from a scrap, let's say. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that there's much more inspiration and much more just verve around the uh, around the uh, dressing room, despite the results at the moment. Good word choice. Thanks. Verve. I like that. Appreciate let's bring it. Bring it back to the vernacular. All right. U- ultimately, do you think uh, Pearson is able to rescue Watford? At this point, it doesn't look like it. No. I I just they're going to need to score goals and score a lot of them quickly. <laughs> Um, they do have a lengthy injury list, but they're going to have to splash some cash in January. Yeah, nice to see Fat Drake back out there again. But remember, Nigel Pearson was the one that saved Leicester from relegation when they were in 20th place on Christmas uh, Day. Ah, that's true. Yeah, if anybody And the do following it. season, they said, thank you very much, brought in Claudio Ranieri, and they won the Premier League title. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember I remember rooting for Leicester to stay up that year, too. Yep, like, absolutely. Yeah, wa- watching those games. It's, uh, that's always fun. I mean, we've talked about it before, but it bears worth repeating. You get towards the end of the season, and as you're watching, you know, the, the main spots tend to start to get filled out it's like okay we know who's going to win the title you know maybe there's a battle for fourth and fifth place but the one that's always worth watching is the relegation battle absolutely and those games become like they're not the prettiest games but they're entertaining as fuck oh yeah super energetic every absolutely everybody's just giving everything they have and it's just they get nasty and there's cards and it's just it, it's rough, and then you just kind of get teams that you get behind, and you're kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of rooting for that team to stay up. I'd like to see Yeah, especially stay. when you're sitting in a position like one of our two clubs typically are, where there's nothing left to play for the last three games. Right, and you look at the schedule, and you go, oh, we're playing uh, one of the teams in the relegation battle. We're losing that one. Yep. Because our game, me- it means nothing to us, but it means everything, everything to, to them. them. Yeah, so I told you that Nigel Pearson stat uh, <laughs> to tell you this one. Watford's getting relegated, and they're not going to win the uh, Premier League next year. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with <laughs> Under you. Under anybody. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Rounding out the rest of the league in oh, so that happened. Burnley 1, Newcastle 0, Sheffield 2, Aston Villa 0. Actually, Mel, who would that be that beat uh, Aston Villa? No. Say it. What? Say it. Dubblades. Beat Aston Villa 2-0. That's all you wanted me to say was yeah. Dubblades. Yeah, 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 just because I wanted you to say it because you lost to him. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. That's what I'm here for. It's what I'm here for. West Ham 1, Southampton 0. Uh, Brighton 1, Palace 1. Um, Burnley pulled to Burnley at Turf Moor. Yeah. Um, That's exactly what Alan said when I saw him on Sunday. (laughs) Burnley pulled a Burnley. He goes, we got (laughs) Burnley. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I guess we spoke too soon about Newcastle, (laughs) to be completely honest. Well, you spoke too soon. You were like, they're going to go on a three-game winning streak. They're on a roll. They're going (laughs) to light shit up. And Burnley went, nope. Um, Despite that loss, though, they are still in 11th, which is credit to them. Uh, But Chris Wood had the latest Hulk smash header in the last few weeks to power Burnley over the line and stop the rot, Uh, because I think they were on four... Without a win. 
Is yeah. That, is that yeah, about yeah, yeah. right? Something like well, that. Well, no, they had they had won two in a row, three nothing. Then they got smashed by uh, City and Twice. Liverpool. Yeah. And then they won this one. Okay, so maybe it was just the manner in which they lost. I thought it was more. Um, <laughs> well, it was nine goals I think they gave up in those two matches. Yeah. So. Uh, Newcastle failed to muster a shot on target despite out-possessing and out-shooting overall. Um, obviously, if you don't put a ball on frame, you're not going to score a fucking goal. Well, and also, uh, but also at Turf Moor, putting a shot on frame is easier said than done. Yeah, for sure. Like, because they're going to pack it all in. And and you're going to have to beat them from 25 yards out. Right. Because if you put a cross in, Tchaikovsky's heading that shit out. Ben yeah, or Ben, me, that ben shit. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're not. Nick Pope's going to yeah, come claim. You're not. You are not going to break them down. That's, All right. Yeah. I did some admin. Yeah, yeah. Ready? Admin. Ready. I'm excited. Um, despite their form, obviously, this game didn't go so well. But their form has been brilliant. Uh, their only other loss since October 19th was 1-0 to Chelsea. Um uh, on that day was the two nil to Villa until this one. The positive results they've they've accrued in their last ten is seven out of their last ten games going back to the Manchester United win. That's big. That's pretty good. It's big. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the next sentence I wrote for both of these clubs is uh, feels like both of them are going to be safe. Yeah. No. New- Newcastle will be safe. They'll they'll find a way to fuck themselves towards the end of the season and they'll kind of get sucked into the relegation battle and then they'll be fine. Yeah. They won't get, they'll, you know, they'll fly too close to the sun and then, you know, right. warp speed Sud- themselves. Suddenly out of there. they'll need to beat Norwich at home to make sure they secure safety and they'll get it. But they'll get it without a problem. Right. Yeah, that sort of that sort of thing. So with the uh, the blades back on form, getting another win, Villa's in trouble. Yes, because they're down near the uh, relegation zone. But here's the big one: minus seven goals against the closest team to them, below them is minus 17. Yeah. And the teams above them, just above them, are minus nine respectively. Right. Both of them. I so mean, if we don't shit the bed, we're not like, it, deadly yet, but... It, it's, it, that's, we're definitely not deadly in front of gold. That's part of the problem. Well, yeah, because <laughs> Wesley apparently can't do shit. Can't do anything. After Wesley those two brilliant goals much. earlier in the season. Score targets, against Everton. You can score against Everton. That's about it. performing. Tyrone, without him, we don't know how to do anything. Al Ghazi can't dribble, and uh, Jack likes to mess up penalty kicks. Does that about cover it? Where's yeah. my shot? Just yeah. about. Over with? Um, possession was almost even, and Villa outshot Sheffield overall, but put none of their shots on target as well. Yeah, Court- Courtney That's- House didn't do a terrible job uh, filling in for Mings in the back, although he did have that exceptionally high kick that he got away with just a yellow one. Um, where he got the guy in the chest with the spikes. Yeah. Now, now I st- I tend to agree that that card was only worthy of a yellow. Um, and the reason why I think it was only worthy of the yellow is because the Sheffield player's leg was at House's waist. So it's like you look at it, and it was two guys going for a fifty-fifty ball. Both of their spikes were up. They were both going at each other. House just happened to connect. Goalkeeper was off the ground though. Yeah. Wasn't there another? No, one no, no. Where- wasn't goalkeeper. It was uh, two players on the field. How it, oh, was, it was which, a long ball. Which one am I talking about? There was another game where somebody got kicked in the face. I can't remember if that was my what the game fuck am I or talking the about? other one. I don't know what you're talking about, but this was in the middle. This was uh, um, Sheffield was attacking on a long ball that went in the air just outside the 18. House went jumping up for it at the same time as I, I don't remember which uh, uh, Blades player it was, but they both kind of jumped up for it at the same time. House's foot was high. I mean, high yeah and he missed the ball and the Sheffield player missed the ball but the Sheffield's player his foot if he would have connected would have hit him right in the middle of his in the middle of his gut the problem was his house did connect and it was right in the middle of the guy's chest right so I remember Target getting a an elbow <laughs> to the face oh it got but, cleaned out yeah I saw that but you know what he didn't do but what? what didn't he do Sam when Target got elbowed in the face Oh, oh! He didn't chase down the guy and break his fucking ankle like Son did. Yeah, no, he definitely Will you didn't. You please do that. get off the happiest guy in football's back. <laughs> I know he deserves so that much better than that, is doesn't a treasure. he? Treasure. You know, I mean, he was apologetic. Uh, he was crying the whole time. You're Never just, mind. You're just a big meanie, Houston. Yeah. What I'm thinking of happened in Germany. Oh, very good. Wow. It, was, it was Frank. Wow. It was Frankfurt and Schalke, and the goalkeeper came out. Both players were looking at the ball. I think. Hold on. Um, That's not even the same colored jerseys. Look. Not even the same fucking country, Melissa. Not even the same country. Not even All the same right, league, I'll show you this to you guys afterwards. Jerseys. This is 
The goalkeeper drop kicked the, the attacker. Ad, it was admin, ridiculous. Admin clearly not your strong suit. No, um, I just had. Listen, I've watched so much football this weekend. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and take that shot of Malort, girl. Yeah, I, I mean, on the one side we played shit. Uh, we couldn't. It was just. It was terrible. It was just terrible. And I'm optimistic, so up the villa and yeah, fuck the blades. So, do you want something else funny that happened? Sure, something else funny that happened. Um, I was listening again to talk sport while I was working, uh, and or on the way out to work, and it was their their phone in show that they do after the games have finished for the day, and uh, Darren Bent, former Aston Villa striker, was on, uh, and he was brought there to score goals and save them from relegation, which he did. Right. Uh, and he was talking about what Villa needed, and he said that morning they obviously need to score goals because their defense is relatively sorted. They just need to be able to score goals. Yeah. He said that he was talking to a Villa fan earlier that day, and yeah. they said that they've been linked with Benteke, right? They had a guy on the phone that they were Ooh. talking to. Christian Benteke from uh, Crystal Palace. Right, who essentially is a legend there. <laughs> right, right. at Villa, at Villa. Not score so much since he's left since Villa. Since he's left Villa. But they still consider him an idol there, right? Right, they, of course. They hold him in very high regard. Yeah. And... They were saying, you know, maybe if you get the fans behind you again, feel some love again, maybe, you know, things change and the tides turn and you can start putting the ball in the back of the net again and get some confidence. The guy that was on the phone at Talk Sport <laughs> uh, was a Deliveroo driver, like an Uber Eats driver. Right, right, right. Uh, in England. And um, he was just sitting outside the restaurant he was supposed to be picking the food up at, talking to the people at Talk Sport. And, uh, and he says, uh, he said, Darren, mate. What are you on about, right? What are you talking about? Right. Ben Teke couldn't finish his Christmas dinner. <laughs> Let alone finish Let alone goal. finish goals, yeah. Oh, uh, fucking brilliant. And I thought that was one of the most clever disses for this time. It was seasonally appropriate, and he didn't miss a beat. <laughs> I thought it was right, fantastic. Right on time, right on time. <laughs> so, um, I, 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 honestly, Mel, I, w- yeah. I wouldn't be too concerned yet. I I you, you're you're one, in the right. One, one really shitty performance isn't a trend. I mean, um, you two know well, what it's shitty two, trends look it's, like. It's well, I mean, I would say you've had two shitty Did losses we just in get a row. Dug out by a Villa supporter. She she's had two shitty losses so, in a well, row. So welcome she back should, to the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you after yeah. four years. Yeah, and the last time I checked, in my last two games, we haven't dropped points. So both of you all can fuck yeah, off. The last time I wasn't in the top flight was ninety odd years ago. Yeah. yeah, that's not something Houston can say. <laughs> I was going to say, say yeah, this but was 85, 86 years no, ago. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, about 85, 86. The two longest standing teams in the top flight of uh, English soccer mm-hmm. are Arsenal 1, Everton 2. And neither of even, us were ever relegated. Even, what is, it, what is yeah. the top flight counter? Were, were we you were, ever relegated? We were relegated back in the 40s. Okay, and then see, promptly won and went right back up. When football was reorganized, I think they put us into Division 2, but we were never <laughs> relegated through the season. Yeah, and we won our way up, and we haven't been back down since. Yeah, we went down once and went right back up. Yep, and uh, yeah, like Liverpool has been relegated. United, Man, got United relegated. has been relegated. City, I mean, everybody loves to talk about City, but City used to be a shit team until they got really, really rich. Yep, I mean, they were a terrible team. Until, Oil money, man. Until the last ten well, years, everybody likes the comeback story, and you know, <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, they no. do. They do. Not Every when they movie, purchase Every their movie. success. Wow. Yeah, but every movie features a comeback story, so yeah, that's, I'm not worried. Jack. That's okay. I Mel's, just, Mel's, team, Mel's you, team was really good in the 50s. Can you put like the parental advisory thing on the Hallmark Channel so she could stop watching comeback stories of the guy that wants to love the girl? All right, so what I need you to do, mm-hmm. Mel, considering we're talking about Hallmark movies here, yes, sir. is I need you to walk to the gazebo. When you get to the gazebo, hit the mute button. Thank you very much. So, uh, wow. West Ham. Wow, <laughs> I got to hold on. Let me give you a little bit of uh, applause for that one, sir. Less of this, more pushy button. Okay, so West Ham needed that one. Dear Lord, did the Hammers need that one. They actually looked like they wanted to play for the shirt again and play for the manager again. Um, I liked. I, I had asked this question before. I had posed it to uh, some of the uh, Hammers supporters that um, listened to the show. I said, why not put... Alaire and Antonio out there together. Together, yeah. And they were like, uh, they're both kind of the same player. Not sure if it would work. They did Alaire as a lone striker, and they did Antonio right behind him. And Alaire gets a goal, and Antonio played his fucking dick off. Well, he always that does. That man, I mean, just, 
you, you want to talk about a man of the match award? That is the quintessential man of the match Absolutely. award. He was all over the pitch. He was defending fucking corners and getting headers out. He was running every length of the fucking field. If he got tackled, you would see him trying to pull himself up as he fell down. Like, yeah. Just insane game out of that man. So, West Ham supporters and Newcastle supporters are very similar. Very blue collar, right? They want it. They know they're not going to win things necessarily. They might have an odd cup run or something like that, right. but they they know their quote unquote place in the world or their team's place in the world, right? What they want you to do is go out and give everything for the shirt, and if you do that, you will be beloved and revered by them. Okay, that man's a god for so, them. Well, exactly, exactly that, right? It was if you go out and you have an abject performance, you could beat three nil. They're all over your back. You're not fit to wear the shirt. Fuck you. Get out of my club. I hate you. If you go out and you die getting a 5-0 loss, they're singing your name to the rafters. Yeah, because all it's about is is you turning up for the team. You coming to work the way I go to work. Didn't right? they have like- I, co- I go and bust my ass. Yeah. So you need to come bust your ass. Because you're getting paid 600 times more than I'm getting paid. Didn't Nazari go there and just kind of fuck off, and they just, oh, they ripped him a new one pretty quickly. Wilshire didn't have a very, had a very well, short w- Wilshire's still there. Them. He's yeah. just injured all the time. Yeah, I but, mean, but his start just was not that on from good, Arsenal. and they wanted him no, off quick. Absolutely. And, and but that's why, players, over. that's why players like Mark Noble. Oh, God, yeah. You know, survived there. That's why players like Lucas Fabianski. Who at four nil down is still diving around, you know, El Gato style, trying to save stuff. Diving head that's first why, into the post to try to save exactly. The fucking ball. That's yeah. why Mikel Antonio has done well there. He hasn't scored the most goals in the world. He's not the best striker in the world, but by any means. But God damn it, does he do everything? He runs his fucking socks off. But when he does score a, po- a, a goal, you know what he does? Let's do it. He rides that pony. He does ride the pony. <laughs> it's the Best celebration ever. It does ride the pony. That, that one and then the uh, <laughs> humping the ground one that he, or was it humping the ground or slid on the ground and like laid on his side? I think he slid posed. on, yeah, I think he slid and posed. And that was back to back weeks in scoring. It's just brilliant. That That's a guy I am very quickly falling in love with as a player. Oh, I'm I, just like, yeah, yeah, no. how could you not like that fucking guy? The, it, it's a guy that lays everything on the line every time. I mean, he's not the fittest player in the world. And he does need to come off the field frequently, 75th, 80th minute, because he's worked so hard. I was going to say, when you give 150%, you're not going to make it 90 minutes. Like, he's just a guy who, the minute he's on the pitch, it's go. It just never stops. And Absolutely. Big, big credit to him. Um, Southampton, you're at home. You got a wounded animal. Here's your opportunity to get it. And the first half was so, again, much like they had the, um, what was it, two weeks ago, and they uh, uh, they it was a six-pointer. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Watford. Two yeah, it was one. Watford. It was 2-1, yeah. Yeah, it was one nothing Watford at the end of the first half, and the fans are booing you off the field. And at least in the Watford match, they came out and got the win, but they came out after being booed off the field at halftime again and just showed fucking nothing. Well, they did grow into the game a bit. David Martin did come up trumps. Oh yeah, from time to time they did show a little bit more, but um, it was it was not never enough. enough. No, not enough. D- Danny Hings, the unluckiest man in football this past weekend, yeah. <laughs> hit the post twice. I think one of those he was a judge to be offsides, and then I think it was called back for, for he actually scored, but it was called back for kind of a frivolous foul. Right. That I don't really think was a foul to be honest with you. Right. Right. But a gorgeous shot from the edge of the box to the upper right corner <laughs> It was fantastic, but it got called back. Uh, the whistle had already gone for a foul. I, I don't feel much sympathy for Southampton. Neither like, do I. Like we both have stated multiple times, is kind of a team we want to see go down. But I feel for Ings, and that's me saying that about a former Liverpool player. Um, the guy busts his fucking ass trying to win. He single-handedly is trying to get three points. Trying to keep them up. Every single week. And also, I, I don't think Hassan Hoodle should be judged by this in the Premier League. I think he's got a shit team. No, I think he has a terrible team. I think he has two or three bright spots in yeah. that team, and that's it. And and somebody like Ward Prowse, I don't necessarily feel bad about because Ward Prowse is going to get a job. He's yeah. going to get sold. He's going no, to right, play but for he, like he's one of the bright spots. Yeah, Danny Ings, one of the bright but, spots. But he's They're not even a bright spot jobs. all the time. Like no, Ings never turns it off. Like there's a reason Che Adams is on the bench. Is he didn't score any 
goals when he first got his opportunity, but he's never going to get an opportunity what, again because Ings is just going to keep fucking doing well, it. The other thing is Che Adams. I heard a kind of a damning stat. I think he's only had two shots on target all season, and no. he got played for the first six games. Right, and that kid, but here's the thing. That kid is getting nothing more than 15-minute trot outs at the end of it because Ings is yeah. not getting, like, you're not, Put, like the first if he's name, fit. if the he's fit, he's going. First in. name on your yeah. team sheet isn't even McCarthy in the net. It is Ings, the no. first fucking name on Absolutely. your list. Absolutely, I, I completely Ings. agree with that. Yeah, um, so but James, I think James Ward Prowse, in a position he's in, gets a bit of a hard stick. He does a lot of thankless work, and he only pops up when it's a free kick or here or there around the edge of the box for a goal. I mean, he's playing in a position where he's not required to score a ton of goals, and he still pops up with an odd one. But he does do a lot of hard work. I think his I, his partner Pierre Emil Hoiberg could do more. I don't. I don't think he's being played in the right position. I don't think Ward Prowse is a holding midfielder. I, I don't think, think he is he, either. I think I personally think he's not. He's not a winger in the sense of like a attacking winger. He's a wing midfielder kind of guy. He's a work the sideline with a with a good wing back defenseman put in crosses, make a little bit of weave play down the sideline. I mean, That's I could see him what being I number 10, a little bit forward up as well. I mean, he's got an yeah, eye for a pass. He's got a great a great shot from distance on good, him. Good enough with the ball. Could I would, say, I would say needs to be better with the ball, but not bad. Not not horrendous with the ball. I mean, it could be better. Um, so let's go ahead and get I into the... To go down. Let's get into the derby. That's not a derby that uh, they call it a derby, so I guess we have to pretend it's a derby. I called it the almost derby. The almost derby. <laughs> what is it? The M25 derby? M25 or M23, yeah. M25 derby. The <laughs> the frenemies derby, as we yeah. like to call it. The Paul versus Brad derby. Um, yeah, another uh, a derby from these, these haunches here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, found, um, I found... That's not the right word, is it? No, 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 it's not. You that's knew, not the right. As soon as I said second, it, I was like, that's like, eh, not right. Hmm, from these haunches. No. Uh-uh. What were you going for? I'm not sure, to be honest with All you. All right, should we just move on? It's a derby from this parish. Let's say that. All right, we'll allow it. And back to the gazebo she goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and you. The <laughs> Did the guy fall in love with the girl yet that said no to him earlier? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Yeah, and then she's going to move to Montana. You've just finished every Hallmark movie ever. <laughs> yep, they kissed in the gazebo. Awesome. You know, they held hands walking up to the gazebo because they've only held hands the and entire time. And it snowed movie. in LA for the first time in yeah. 75 years. And yeah. no tongue. Yeah. Never N- any uh, tongue. Of course not. No, Never it's always a peck. Tongue. It's always a peck. It's just a simple pressed lips of love. Yeah. You know what I like? What do you like? I like the open mouth, no tongue. That's hot. Oh, yeah. That one does it for you. <laughs> it's not We're injury just time. Breathing yet. into each other's mouth. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> It's not injury time yet, killer. Sorry, right, sorry. This is no pastries in Prague, okay? <laughs> um, I was a little surprised when we saw the lineup. Um, Palace lines up um, Zaha on one side, Ayu on the other side, and Benteke in the middle. And you're expecting they're going to probably have a go at this game. And the first half was 1,000% Brighton. Brighton <laughs> dominated the entire first half. I mean, yeah, there there were still some chances for Palace, and um, and Matt Ryan did come up with a couple of saves. But you're right; it was mostly Brighton the entire time. Um, just just kind of surprised me, and and Brighton was pulling that like kind of city shit, like they're like Ryan's passing the ball to a outside defender who's passing it back to him, and he's passing it to fucking. Um, then he's passing it to a uh, holding midfielder that's just outside the 18 who turns around confidently and works up the field. I'm like, who the fuck, fuck is, is this, this we're watching? <laughs> that's exactly right. I was like, and and how in the fuck is Palace letting this happen in their building? Right. It, uh, it did have some flair. When Benteke cleaned Lewis Dunk out. Oh, elbow, yeah. Elbow to the face. That was pretty great. Oh yeah, both teams. Uh, they did start to play a little bit harder after that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, um, possibly accidentally. Okay. He was looking at the ball, but mm. he happened to raise his arm as soon as Dunk got there, <laughs> and swing and hit him flush in the nose. Well, um, I'm 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 sure Dunk was nothing but a gentleman the entire first half. Absolutely. Did, didn't put any arms in his back every time a ball went up in oh, the arm. Cool sure. On. Why you would know, he no, do that? No, no tugging of jerseys. No holding him. I'm sure there was none of that going oh, that on. That would be rude. I mean, it's a friendly. It's it's a friendly non-derby. So why would they be uh, physical at all, right? Absolutely. 
Um, Neil Mopé finally broke the deadlock uh, with a pretty decent composure, to be honest with you, and found the top right corner. That was after Troussard's wonderful um, first time cross into the box. Uh, ball was played over the top, diagonal, um, from the left wing to the right wing. And he, I mean, I love the slow motion replay of it. You could see him watching the ball all the way to his foot and just first time with his right foot back across, yeah. putting into a position where a player should be. Um, one of the Brighton players tried to get to it. I forget who it was. Tried to uh, connect with it. Didn't. It fell to uh, Mope. Took it on his right foot. Kind of had a, a bit of a poor touch. The spin of the ball kind of kept it close. He composed himself. Left foot, top corner. Yeah. Uh, roof of the net. It was fantastic. Um, and good composure again from him. Very easy to snatch at those chances and sky him or put him wide. Um, and then Zaha uh, rescued a point uh, in the almost derby. Um, after he rifled a shot to beat Ryan in his near post. Um, the crossbar was hit a couple of times from both teams, most notably Christian Benteke running down the right side in a kind of a cross shot yeah. as Zaha was streaking down the left, beat the goalkeeper, uh, and then hit the crossbar. But um, I think Matt Ryan really should have done better with Wilfred Zaha's goal. Yeah. Much yeah. like Patricia should have done better with Lucas Morris. Both shots were hit with ferocity. I mean, I, that's fair enough. But it's your near post. It's almost directly over your head. <laughs> I think you need, to, as a goalkeeper, I think you need to be getting to those. I, I, I would say the happier of the two sides has got to be Brighton because you played at your rival's building and you walked away with points again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We talk uh, about it about the big six, right? Yeah. Or the supposed big six. Beat them in your building, tie, tie them in theirs. theirs. Absolutely. That's what you look for. Exactly right. Um, yeah, it's a, and I mean, all in all, I, I enjoyed the game. You know, I mean, it's I will it was say a this fun much, little game to watch. I will say yeah. this much for it being the fake derby that we joke about. The players on the field, there's a genuine dislike between those two teams. Yeah, and it's got everything a derby should have. Uh, the supporters went nuts when both yeah. goals went. It was fantastic. Yeah. And so it just it's just not in the same city or you know you know same area code, same postcode, success same. rivals or political rivals or any real reason to be rivalries other than apparently a fucking road. It's time to tell you what little we know. It is prediction time. I don't know shit. You That's so, obvious. Oh, my God. On the don't know shit level, it was brilliant. So um, Pat and Sam were both losers. They both actually placed bets at the show, and both of those bets didn't hit either, <laughs> which was pretty fucking funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was enjoying watching Pat pace back and forth and cuss at his phone. Yes. So um, Kitty didn't fare very well either, and uh, she has kicked her boo, Jamie, out of the coop and into the doghouse. Ooh. Ooh. He is so fucking proud of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, your boy, <laughs> your, your boy, your boy hit on both of his bets. And your boy is now this close to the winning side of things. I don't need to do some fucking 10 game magic parlay with a teaser. My shit's going to come in with simple, easy bets. I'm just going to keep it going. So, uh, Graham, you've lost enough to worry about your child's first semester of uh, books for college. Um, can you please be sensible, just once sensible? I'm debating. As he sifts through his phone looking for some last-minute bet. I am. I'm parlay. debating right now. Sam, perhaps Do as I, I pass, pass, as I the, pass the, sports, the Dort Spirect couple <laughs> losers. <laughs> so what I wrote uh, for mine this week um, to put in... It says, I'm not writing it all down, but trust me, it was fucking bad. Good. Mm -hmm. There we go. Fed the couple Brilliant, losers. brilliant, brilliant. So, let's see. What I, what I, let me tell you what I want to do, and I want you to answer me okay, if you I, think it's a good idea. I, oh, I mean, well, what? You want to put your juju on me? I don't want you to No, juju listen. On me. I just I want um, you to, because these are good odds. Okay, go ahead. Leicester to beat City at City plus 600. Um, Vardy against that back line is so, tasty. So the first first thing I That's would say tasty. The first thing I would say, Sam, is um, know your bet before you're doing the show and just looking it up on eight 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 Sport. It is tasty, and it is tasty for that very reason. I I would stay away. If you've looked at my notes, my bet is made. <coughs> I just I wanted to see what you I know. thought about that. I, I I say stay away. I would stay away from that. 
Because I could parlay I it. I say go it, for it. Parlay <laughs> right? it. Double down. Let's get weird. And Vincent Le- Company to score. He doesn't Lester, even play there anymore. <laughs> Lester, Lester is about to. Nice throwback because he did score against, against them last, last, last season. Won them very the title. Well yes. Very that was good. The, basically the last chance for City to lose points. And um, they almost did. The, um, the, the thing I would say about that is Lester's got back-to-back games against... At City and home to Liverpool, I think they're far more. If, if you're expecting points out of one of the two, the one you're expecting points out of is Liverpool at home more so than City on the road. Right. I think you look at City on the road as let's get in there, get stuck in, maybe we get a counterattack goal, and let's just keep them out of the fucking net. Oh, and this starts Liverpool's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about, about that in injury yeah. time. They're on uh, Club World Cup. They're on Club World Cup. Yeah, so only nine games this weekend. Yeah, so who were they supposed to play? <coughs> Somebody gets a weekend West off. Ham. They're supposed Much to play West Ham. needed for them as well. Yeah, it's very needed for them. There so. you go. All right, so go ahead. Get to it. What's your bet? Everton and Arsenal to draw. Very good. So you feel that At confident. Goodison Park. You feel that confident about your team that they're going to do. That sounds so boring. That they're going to do average. Yeah, zero, zero. <laughs> That's so <laughs> the <boring>. sexy nil nil. <laughs> wow. All right, so let's go ahead and uh get our boy. That's plus two seventy, by the and way. And now it's time for our degenerate gambling <laughs> friend Pat's pick of the week. Well, great news. I'm digging myself deep in the hole like everyone else on the show. I'll make <laughs> my uh pick this week short because uh it needs no explanation. Man City minus a goal in the in a half. Uh, minus a goal in a half. I think he meant minus a goal and a half uh, to Lester for minus 105. Um, he said, I'm down 400 after the live show. I'm just going to try to cut that in half, risking 210 to make 200. So Pat is actually deeper in the hole now than I am. How you like that? All right. The professional degenerate gambler is doing worse than me. By the way, real quick, I just wanted to make sure we know I did not call a nil-nil exact score. I just have Everton Arsenal draw, to draw, draw. Yeah, yeah, draw. To draw at plus 270. All right, good. So, um, like I said, I uh, I hit on both of my bets despite your disbelief and being assuming that uh, Salah wasn't going to even play. And I just liked watching goals. you cheer for Liverpool. <coughs> And then cheering for an ex-Liverpool player and Sterling to score against you. My goodness. Everybody sees the picture on Drunker United FC when I'm when I'm petting his head to to comfort him. It's because Sterling just scored and I just hit both of my bets. And I was actually whispering in his ear what a fuck off he was because I just hit both of my bets. Hey, you know what else is funny, Mel? <coughs> All the shit he talks about VAR designed specifically to allow Liverpool to win the title, and yet he's cheering for Liverpool players. He went, yeah, when like I was here on the couch with him when it happened, and I wish I'd had my phone out sooner. <coughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, and I think you're the one that spray-painted the six on the Toffee building. <gasps> Shut your fucking pie hole. Ooh, Shut your theory. pie hole. Let's get Alex Jones working on that one. <laughs> so, so, anywho, you may have disbelief in my tried and true system, but Big Sam's Lock of the Week. I could go back to saying 30% of the time it works 100% of the motherfucking time, And baby. that's why you're still down. <clears throat> Not down by much. I'm now only down um, 261. So I am just, leave it shortly, clawing away. And uh, gotta say, this weekend, I wasn't really a fan of the games. Not there was me nothing that really stood out. That's kind of why I did ours. So, <laughs> plus, I just wanted to be a dick. I, I went ahead and just looked at bad teams who's going to score on them. And you got Manchester United is, uh, is, is playing against Watford, and uh, Rashford to score any time is plus 133. I think that's a fairly safe bet. He's been on form. Watford's not been playing well. Except when he you, played you. United's going to get a goal. United's going to get a goal. So That's going to come I, from Fred. I think, yeah. Oh, def- <laughs> oh, it's definitely coming from Fred. So now um, that was really great. And it was okay. But we, we strive are tired for, after yesterday. We strive for better <laughs> than to okay. Tell me to hit the mute button, but he can't. <laughs> we strive for better than okay. We give you more. We give you Kitty the chicken. Get Sam's goat. Get his fucking goat. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I 
internet, some people ask me where I found this music because they're like, it's the jam. Yeah, it is. All right, so... um. I guess it was Alan's stupid ass. It, it was. It was an Alan, yeah. Uh, so uh, Kitty was quite displeased when I visited with her and politely asked me why she did not get an invite to the live show. That's not on me. Kitty's my girl. Why didn't you send Kitty an invite? Well, I promptly threw Simi under the bus and said that uh, chickens were not allowed in a brewery, and she said something about needing to be registered as a support animal because she's also expecting to come on the cruise with us, and I told her she had to have that conversation with you. Okay, very good, very good. So, But... Uh, it's fine. I gave her some mealworms, and she shut up. And so I asked her to throw her attention to this week's match, Wolverhampton traveling to Norwich. Now, okay. Quitty, kitty, quitty. Hmm. More bourbon needed. Kitty quickly showed me a picture on her iPhone, of course, of her and Mark Hamill. Luke motherfucking Skywalker, yep, Samuel yep. Graham. Oh my God. Are they paying us to say this? Apparently, she was in Hollywood just a few weeks ago for the newest Star Wars debut. And in the picture, Mark's whispering in her ear. And she said, he whispered, the force is strong in wolves. He is a big Wolverhampton supporter. Oh. So Kitty is going with Wolverhampton to win this weekend. Ah. Wolverhampton win they will. And there you go, guys. Say it like Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda is just eh. Wolverhampton win they will. Yeah. No, he doesn't talk. He just goes. <laughs> I know. Eh. I know it's a joke. Baby Yoda is overrated. So as what? always, and you're dead inside. Bite your tongue. I'm just saying. Oh I my god. Nothing. Nothing. I look at his dead eyes. My the, wife the is. View, my back. wife is dead inside, isn't she? The views and opinions of Melissa Houston do not <laughs> represent or acknowledge the. the because Baby Other, Yoda's fucking I don't adorable. Even know, I don't know how the fucking disclaimer goes. Mm. Buck her, she doesn't speak for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Yoda's the best. I cried when I saw him the first time. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Meh. Just to let you know, people. Uh, oh, my always. God. Taylor, get on it. We need the girls and cat meme of Melissa debating about Baby Yoda. Oh, I mean, yes. Baby Yoda was cute when it was Gizmo or when it was Groot. Or when it was a baby Ewok, and it's just... Hey, weekend update for SNL. They definitely, definitely remember Baby Yoda said, Hey, look, Baby Groot, you need to stop putting words in people's mouths. You need to shut your trap, or I'm going to break you like a twig, bitch. That's exactly what they did on SNL. It was it's fabulous. A little, a little aggressive for a little Baby Yoda. Yeah, well, you know. He's adorable, and no one else is. He's the greatest Jedi that ever lived. I'm trying desperately to get out of this segment. So Go I'm for just it. Gonna say, <laughs> as always, remember to gamble legally and responsibly. So, everybody, through the magic of radio, because you can't see what he's wearing, but Sam is wearing an Arsenal pullover, and we all know what Arsenal's color is. And it would be the same color of the card that Sam received in our game this week. I want to know about this. Go ahead, Sam. Talk to us about DU. I got the teaser, but I need the details. All right. So we lost by a fair margin. Uh huh. A I lot mean, we, of that was, we spotted him a six nothing lead. I believe. I'll say a lot of that was before I got sent off, <laughs> which I did get sent off. But let me just say something to all the people that may or may not come up against me on a football pitch. <laughs> I'm akin to the dark arts. And that's fine. <laughs> we can fuck with each other a little bit out of the view of the referee. That's okay. But don't be a daft cunt, okay? Uh-huh. And this dude was a daft cunt. What'd he do? So when I got there, he elbowed me in the chest. All right. Fine. I was between like him and the goal. saying hello. Yeah, re- fine. Okay. So I gave him a little punch in the spine. All right. Also okay. Yeah, you high-fived Th- him back. Those are the dark arts. Right, those are right, the little right. things that we do to just chip at each other. Then he... Ball was on the our left, their right side attacking us. He runs around my right shoulder to try to get me to shift out of position as he checks to the ball on the left side. While he's running behind me, full out kicks me in the leg. Mm. Just, just completely swipes me. So I tried to catch up to him before the ball got played, and I couldn't. So the ball got played over the top to our right side, their left. He checked across the middle to the ball, and the second that that ball left that dude's foot, I went clean through that motherfucker. 
<laughs> went clean through that bitch, and I already don't like him. Uh, and then uh, he, this guy likes to dive and roll around on the ground, like over accentuate a foul, and then but, do dumb shit like this, and and then likes to kick you and think that it's okay. If yeah. you're gonna be a diving, if you're gonna be a diving little twat, be a diving little twat. Don't then also decide Try to be to a act dirty like player. A hard man. Yeah, yeah. So you you're one or the other. You can't be a bitch and be hard at the same time. Correct. You're one or the right. other. Got it. Got it. So then he stands up. <laughs> well, he's laying there on the ground looking at the referee. Yeah, and I. T- I down to him. Like, hey, fuck you, motherfucker. Right? <laughs> I'm going off on him. Oh, yeah. He gets up. Got to tell him what you think. He gets up, comes close. I shove him back. He shoves me back. Then he <sighs> bitch punches. <laughs> Fingers first from over his head. Ugh, like this. All right. So those of you that don't have the power <coughs> of sitting where I'm sitting and watching it, he's taking his wrist back, and he pretty much slapped you with a cold, closed fist. Kind of. But he didn't really make good contact. He didn't make me. didn't make contact because Sam put his hands up in front of his face, oh. and then he tried to kick me in the balls with his studs, Ooh. and missed. Yeah, and then I started going after him. At which point I was held back by three of our people. Well, yeah. And uh, so what happened to him? The ref. Oh, gave, we both got red. Oh, both good. got reds, and I uh, I walked out on the field, and I said to the ref, "I want you to understand, you just gave my player a red card." For not, not fighting. Him. Yeah. Like, he didn't take a swing at him. He yeah. didn't push him. He didn't do anything. That guy did everything. My guy put his arms in front of his face, and you gave my guy a red card for it. And he looks me in the face and goes, I didn't see it. Well, then. Right. Of which Sam, as he's walking off the field, yells, this is Sam walking off the field, then why the fuck am I getting a card if you didn't fucking see it? <laughs> yeah, that so that started yeah. going off on a ref. Then one of their players were actually cool with. So while the game was still going on, yeah. and I was undressed on the, not undressed, I changed into my street clothes. Oh, I've been there. He undresses. And I was on the sideline as uh, our boy came over, our friend came over and uh, was throwing a ball. And I was like, your boy's a fucking cheat. Why? He was like, man, I know. Stop. I know. And I was like, fuck <laughs> that. He's a cheat. I'm going to fucking kill him. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... Um, and many of you on Drunk United FC saw the picture of Duncan Ferguson choking Mushari that was shared. Um, next time I see this cunt, that's happening. Oh, my gosh. As soon as the whistle's blown, I'm going to go straight through him again. Let me know which game that is. I need to come and get some video of this shit. His own team kicked him off the team because they hate him. Yeah, he's he been sucks. Off he's the a team fucking before. dickhead. They needed to make up numbers. They only had two subs. Right. So they were just trying to get numbers there, which is why they invited him on for this game. I haven't even seen him play with them this season at yeah, all. Yeah, plays a little here and there. but Right, yeah. whenever they need players, whenever they need bodies, he shows up. He's the a fucking s- cocksucker. The slapping with your wrist. Oh, it's a total bitch hit. I, like, I'm picturing a seventh grade fight when, like, exactly. you know, don't know, and they're leading in the punch with their wrist, but it's still the punch move. Exactly. And then who kicks? Who, who goes for the balls with studs? I mean, yeah, who kicks? Who, who kicks? kicks? I mean, he was when, literally swinging his arms and swinging it and, and swinging his legs. I mean, and all was, I was doing was getting more angry by it. <laughs> yeah. Sam literally put his hands in front of his face to protect himself. And just was calling him like a fucking cunt. Like, yeah. fuck yourself. Wow. Right. All you got. Fuck you, fuck, man. Fuck. And then uh, clench fists, and I start walking towards him to do real business. Oh, yeah. And then it takes three people to hold me back. <laughs> I'm surprised it took just uh, three. Our, our, our boy Josh said, if I thought you were going to get a red card over it, I should have just fucking let you go. <laughs> right. right. Should have just let you fucking clock him one. Uh, I'll get him again. Yeah, you'll get him soon enough. Next yep. time you play him, you'll just put him on the uh, ground right at the f- like uh, first. Next time of the we game. play, yeah, I'm standing on his heels and all of it. Yeah, you'll I just. just I might. I might pants him. Yeah, just take. You know what I might do is I might pull his fucking pants down. Yeah, just pants him the I fuck. Really with him. want to and be then there kick him in the back of the fucking leg. You got to do the old school Sammy technique. Stand behind him, start like grabbing his butt, and be like. Man, I've never had an Arab man before. <laughs> Just see how he reacts, because yeah. that'd be great. So, uh, anywho, that about wraps it up. Here we are thinking we were going to keep it short, because we weren't talking about three games, nah, so we're already over fun. an hour. Just having uh-huh. fun. <laughs> so, uh, any parting words, Sammy? Yeah, you're not going to be here next week, mate. <coughs> No, I won't. So that's why we went long. We just, you know, we wanted to get it in, have some fun. Yep. Um, again, I want to say thank you to Monument City Brewing. It was a lovely time uh, the other day. Uh, the other day, yesterday. Now I'm it turning was, into you, yesterday. forgetting days and shit. It was um, yesterday, which was Saturday, which was amazing day, event. Which was absolutely Sunday. amazing event. It was. Yeah, it was so much fun. Could, couldn't have couldn't have asked for more. Thank you for all the support of everybody who came out. And it was it great. Was just it was a nice lot of fun. People. It was amazing meeting everybody and talking with everybody. It was just fucking. Uh, I we couldn't have asked for more. Yeah, hopefully the people that won the uh, won the uh, games that we played enjoy their koozies. 
Um, there will be T-shirts available at some point. Uh, we had an issue well, with our supplier. If you want a T-shirt now, uh, you can email in to the DU Football Show at gmail dot com, and they will forward it over to me. Uh, There's no the uh, <laughs> DU Football Show at gmail dot com. There we go. And just need to know your size. Well, they'll send it to me, and I'll get in touch with you. Uh, T-shirts are $25. They come in all colors. It features the DU Football Show logo on the front and your custom hashtag on the back. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's it, really. Oh, you know what? (coughs) Fuck that. Hand me another shot of Malort because Arsenal was that bad. I did one at halftime because I knew we were going to lose that game. I remember. I handed it to you. We let a goal in. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Heavy hands. Shit. It's below the tails. Jesus Christ. No, it's not. We killed half a bottle of bourbon. Now we're killing the Malort. It's, the, uh, so Russ is going to produce the show next week. And the good thing about Russ producing the show next week is he has six bottles of Malort for me because we are at the tail end of this one because our three shit show of the season. suck balls. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, it was pitiful. We let a goal in after a minute and 38 seconds. Uh, so fuck them. Okay. Throw it back. So, you know what? Burn it. Burn it down and fucking start over. Well, the talk right now it's fucking ridiculous. The talks are Teta, so a first time coach now, which pisses me the fuck off because your talk is Ancelotti. Yeah, yeah I mean it's, <gasps> it's it's not a, it's not official, but it's getting real close to happening. Really annoyed. I loved the Photoshop picture of his eyebrow <laughs> turned into an A and then Arsenal written after it. Yeah, that no. was fantastic. No, nope. I needed that in my life. That would that would, that would be a coup if we get we get the big name manager and you get the first time manager. So thanks, boys. You guys sucked so bad that I'm doing two of these in your honor. <coughs> All right, thank you very much for joining us, boys and girls. Um, as always, we're getting ready to do injury time, and uh, that's just more of the show. We actually preview the weekend's games, and if you want to check that out, Sammy, what's the uh, link for our Patreon? I thought I was done. Um, it's www.patreon.com backslash D U football show. Very Patreon P A T R E O N. Um, so we have, uh, koozies for $5. Dot org, dot gov. Yeah. So we have koozies for $5. We got shirts for 25. Uh, just email us directly. We'll gladly take care of that for you. If there's a particular color you want, like we've done claret shirts, we've done light blue shirts. So we will do it around the, uh, idea of your club's colors. And uh, says we'll do whatever we want. Yep, and we'll do uh, fun, fun uh, uh, hashtags on the back too. Um, there will be shipping handling involved, but honestly, guys, we're just going to cover our costs on that. We're not gonna, we're not gonna bend you over the barrel on the uh, shipping and handling. It's literally just it's gonna not cover. This year. Yeah, it's just <laughs> just gonna cover our costs. So twenty twenty five is the shirt, and I figure what like a, maybe another six in shipping and handling if it's going out of the state. So um, other than that. Thank you. We'll only bend you over the barrel if you listen to don't Injury worry, Time guys. and like I Apple do, Danishes. I do admin. They don't. All right. So, uh, hey, everybody. I'll see you all in two weeks while uh, Sam runs this ship. It's going to be a fun, fun night. We're all going to die. I've seen them more than once. Yes, you have. It's another problem. (laughs) And it also won't be the last time you'll see them as well. I would imagine that's the case.